What's up guys, welcome to today's video. Today's video is another version of Rad vs. Bad where we review a camera piece of gear, a camera piece of equipment, and we discover or not whether it is something that is rad that can be used in a professional setting or if it's something that is just plain bad, that is trash, and you should save your money and move on to the next thing. Let's get into it. All right guys, so today we're taking a look at the Tilta Mini Follow Focus system. So this Tilta Mini Follow Focus comes in at $99, so it is on the budgetary side. I have had this thing for a while, but um, like I said, I usually do reviews, you know, after having a piece of equipment after a little while, just because, you know, I want to review it after I've actually battle tested it and after all the hype has died down. So let's take a look at this thing and I'm gonna show you guys what it comes with. So first and foremost, it comes with this cool little hard case and um, I couldn't fit everything back in there, but it actually does come with one of those little zip tie uh, follow focus gears to put on a photography lens. I couldn't fit it in there, but it does come with this as well. So when you first open this, you'll notice up here at the top, you get a rail. So you get a 15 millimeter rail with this follow focus system to help you mount it to your cage or to mount it to uh, your camera. So that essentially looks like that. So that comes with it. And you also get the Allen wrench. So uh, Tilt is pretty good with supplying tools, supplying the little extras that they don't have to, or things that their competitors actually don't include in these kits. So shout out to Tilta for always looking out for us on that front. Um, that way when you get something, you don't have to go running around looking for tools, running around looking for rods. Basically it's like a plug and play. It's a, it's a rig and go type of system. So right here is your follow focus and it already comes built. You already have your, um, your gear on there. That's gonna connect to your actual lens gears. So let's put this to the side. This is a plastic case, something you could transport this follow focus in if you wanted to. It's pretty rugged. I've carried it around or you can repurpose it and put something else in there. But uh, looking at this follow focus gear, it is it seems it seems pretty legit. It seems pretty sturdy. When you mess with the wheel here, there's not a lot of play in it. Um, it's a metal aluminum build. You have this plastic ring here for your dry erase markers. And you also have these hard stop um, screws right here. So what you can do with these is you can screw them down to whatever your uh, focus marks are, where you wanna focus pull. So let's say we have a mark here and we have a mark here. If I just tighten those down, it provides us a hard stop to where we can't pull focus past those points. And in order to get rid of those, you just unscrew them and they become loose. So um, one complaint I have seen about this online is people don't like that once those are loose, they don't easily just come out um, you have to actually take this apart if you want to get rid of these little uh, hard stop screws uh, for good. Um, so they kind of just dangle. And then, you know, when you go to move it, sometimes they get caught. They're not stopping you from focusing, but they kind of get caught and they don't just hang at the bottom. And you're kind of dragging them up to the top uh, past your main focus point up here on top. But I mean, to me, that's no big deal. I haven't had any issues with it. Um, I think it's just minor complaints. People always have to complain about something. You also have a spot in the middle here for a whip. Um, if you have somebody, you know, manually pulling focus for you. And uh, you have two joints of articulation here. You have this arm here that allows you to swing it away from your camera. If you're doing lens changes or just get a, uh, a greater degree of angle on that lens if you're using a bigger lens or if your rig is needing you to accommodate uh, a specific degree of angle to uh, butt your gear up against your lens gear. And then you also have this joint of articulation here that once this is locked down, this allows you to swivel this top knuckle here. So there should be no issues with actually getting that to connect to the gears on your lens. Um, so far, so good for me. Um, like I said, $99, you can't really go wrong with this. I've had other follow focus gears in the past or other follow focus systems. 
and they're like the uh, the map boxes we talked about in our last rad versus bad video. Um, they range all across the board from super cheap and junky to all the way up to overpriced um, stuff that is basically people are buying it just to uh, be brand loyal or people are buying it just to have bragging rights on that particular piece of equipment. So for years I was using this cheap no name Amazon you know follow focus system here. And even though it had a little bit of play, what I mean by play is if I hold this wheel here, I can still kind of move uh, move the wheel here before the gear actually engages. And um, that's one thing you wanna look for in follow focus systems. Um, and the reason for that is you really have to get a feel for this in order to know that you're gonna hit your marks. But um, this one served me well. This one is still something I would keep as a backup. And I think this, at the time I bought it, maybe six or seven years ago, was $120. So it was even more expensive being a no-name brand than the one uh, that I have right here, than the Tilta. Now, with that said, same thing, that Tilta, if you try to find play in this gear here, uh, it doesn't have any. So to me, this is a solid, this is a solid buy, a solid investment, a solid piece of kit for $99, especially on your smaller mirrorless, um, your micro four thirds cameras, like your Blackmagic 4K, your Blackmagic 6K, uh, what have you, you know, this is a solid piece of kit. This is what I will uh, rig on my rig until I end up buying the uh, wireless follow focus system. And I'll probably go with the Tilta Nucleus Nano, you know. Like I said, there's pieces of gear that are deservingly uh, meeting their price point like I understand why lenses are expensive I understand why camera bodies are expensive I understand why certain lights are expensive but a lot of these accessories like this they don't have to be expensive the only reason they're this expensive is because people are buying them so to rig it up on your camera we have the black magic 4k here we have a 15 millimeter rod Again, all you got to do is you have to um, just uh, slip it on with that included. Well, with that included piece here, slip it on, lock down this bottom joint here. And uh, I'm going to lock down the top one and then it's smooth from there. And just like so, you're ready to go. You're ready to pull focus all day. Now, going into things that are more expensive than they should be, I wanna talk real quick about Tilta. I love Tilta as a company, not affiliated, not sponsored, they're not paying me for anything, but I think that they're a company like Small Rig, and I think these companies believe in getting uh, pro grade or prosumer products in the hands of people with a budget right like your indie filmmakers and uh you know just your prosumer kind of people people that deserve stuff because when you're in the prosumer market um you're still using your equipment enough to beat it around and you're going to break stuff that's just made for like the consumer right so we don't need these plastic part things we need things that are actually rugged and uh, things that are going to last and i think small rig um, I think Tilta and there's a few other companies that are really filling that void and really helping a lot of the prosumer or even the professionals that are just on a budget like myself um, get the kind of equipment they need. That way we're not going broke buying the stupid little things like your follow focus, you know, your manual follow focus and that kind of thing. So um, shout out to those guys. So on top of that, um, the reason you use a follow focus is for, you know, being able to pull focus on, you know, lenses with gears, like uh, this Cine lens here. It has gears on the side, and what that helps you do is when you're actually, you know, pulling focus, you're not having to manually use your hand like this. It's easier to do it on the side of the camera, like so and it keeps you more in control of the camera and it's easier to hit those marks. And a good follow focus always has these hardened uh, stop points or it has a little plastic piece where you can mark off, you know, your point so it's easy for you to see focus instead of actually having to look at the, you know, focus distance on the lens itself. You know, a lot of us will use budget lenses like photo lenses or something like that. And then that's when you need to buy um, focus gears. 
or lens gears for your follow focus. So like I said, this Tilta Mini follow focus actually comes with one. Now the one it came with is like a zip tie type of gear. These I don't like. Um, the reason for it is anytime you put these on a lens, they normally have a lot of slack hanging off the top of them. And uh, they're better than nothing, but they're still, they leave something to be desired. So in the past, you have all of these companies like Lens Gears, and there's a couple other ones online that make uh, fitted lens gears or lens gears for your, your photography lenses to convert them over to a follow focus system. Now, the problem with that is you're normally spending 30, 50, $100 or more just for a stupid piece of rubber um, that's going to fit on your lens so you can hook it to your follow focus. Tilta being amazing. They came out with these the other day, so I bought some for my vintage lenses because if you don't know, I like the vintage lenses on my Pocket 4K, especially the FD lenses and your weird one-off lenses like your Helios 44-2, um, but they came out with these. So they came out with their follow focus gears. Sorry, that's upside down. Their follow focus gears. And uh, the price on these guys for each gear, $2. Yeah, you heard me right, two freaking dollars. Now the competitor, the closest competitor that I can find of these, $30 per gear. These are two bucks. Now, there's a caveat to that because the shipping is 15 bucks if you order just one of these. But like in my case, you order four or five, and then that $15 shipping doesn't seem like that big of a deal. So just order them for all of your vintage lenses or for as many lenses as you want to put gears on. That $15 shipping is no big thing. But $2. That's unheard of. So they fit snug. So what they do is they have them broke down into millimeters. So the way you look at this is you look at the same millimeter that is on the inside of your lens. So like if you have a 46 millimeter lens that you would put a filter, ND filter on, then it would correspond with the same millimeter size that this has on uh, this box here. So I have it on a couple of these lenses. They fit super snug and I haven't had any issues pulling focus with them. Um, it lines perfectly up with their follow focus gear and even this third party uh, gear I have here. I mean, most of most of these are standard standard size teeth, so you're not going to have issue, you know, pulling focus on anything. But these are well made. These uh, lens gears haven't had any issue. Now I have some on a couple lenses, but I bought this one here specifically for this 44-2, and I'm not sure if it's going to fit on there. So we're going to go ahead and try and put it on there, and I'll show you how you actually get these on there. So let's open this up. They're actually packaged pretty decently well. So these are just uh, friction fitted. So basically we're gonna have to take the lens cap off and we're gonna squeeze it over till we get to the focus ring. And then uh, it's always a tight fit. And I was thinking to myself, like if, if these are really tight and you can't hardly get it on, I bet you can heat them. Maybe put them in the microwave or I wouldn't probably put them on an open open flame, but put them in the microwave or put them under some hot water or something for a little while and see if you can um, loosen up that rubber to get it to stretch on. Because this one is actually going to be really tight. And uh, like I said, I haven't put it on this lens yet, so we're going to see if we can squeeze it on there. I think we're going to be able to get it because you want these things nice and tight again. You don't want them slipping and sliding when you're trying to pull focus. So uh, the tighter, the better. But one of the main things stopping me from using these vintage lenses on any sort of professional shoot or in a film is like it's easy to use them on one off shots. But if you're trying to pull focus um, with them and I ran into that problem on my latest short film was actually on this 44 2 is there was a specific shot I wanted to use this lens on but it required me to pull focus and as well as you know do some um, more advanced kind of moves with the tripod it was like a pan up to a pan down while pulling focus um, 
and it being a photo lens, I was having to do it with my hands. So I had uh, an AC work in the tripod when I was trying to pull focus with the lens. The shot ended up coming out okay, but had I had this lens gear and I was able to use a follow focus or wireless focus system, it would have come out a lot better and it would have taken less takes um, resulting into save time on set. So, and you guys know on set time is money. You never have enough time while you're shooting. All right, guys, and just like that, we have our gear on our 44.2. So now this is ready for me to be able to pull focus um, using my follow focus gear and actually be able to use this on set. So again, guys, you want to get you this uh, Tilta Mini follow focus system. I promise you it's gonna serve you well on set. It's gonna serve you well just around your studio. It makes using lenses so much easier, um, especially if you're a solo shooter, run and gun type of person, somebody that's a photojournalist, you know, even indie filmmakers, especially indie filmmakers. And if you're using any type of manual focus lenses or you like using cine lenses, invest in this tilt a mini follow focus i'm gonna have all the links down in the description so just hit those again if you click those they don't cost you anything extra they just give me a very small percentage it's a good way to support the channel so i'm certifying this tilt a mini follow focus as rad as well as these tilt a follow focus lens gears these are super rad and for two dollars you can't beat it guys for 99 dollars you can't beat the follow focus system so please go out and get you one it's going to make your life a lot easier so with that i'm drew Sifer. if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel make sure you ding the bell give the video a thumbs up and uh as always remember stay rad and just go shoot and i'll catch you on the next one